Hello mate and welcome to Introduction to Rempire Part 3. In this episode we are going to demonstrate how to display an image, demonstrate transitions and we're going to describe the difference between show and scene. First things though, why do we use images? Well quite frankly a visual novel wouldn't be much of a visual novel if it didn't have any visuals. It's all very well and good having text coming up on the screen but pictures add more depth to our story. We can also significantly reduce the amount of text that we need to use by using images to help us with the narrative. For example, you don't necessarily need to describe what's happening in a scene if you have an image which already demonstrates it, which means you can focus on the dialogue. The first command that we need to know is show. Show is the basic command used in RemPy to display an image on the screen. In order for us to be able to show images on the screen, we need to define what the images are. Now, let's not confuse the difference between an image and a file. When we're talking about images and files in RemPy, a file is a physical file such as a JPEG or a PNG, but the image is the code that RemPy uses or the variable that is assigned to the file in RemPy, which allows us to show on the screen. What this means is when we define an image, we select the name that we're going to use in RemPy. The file location and the size of the image can also be defined. There are other functions that we can use, such as creating film strip animations and conditional images. But for the time being, we're going to focus just on using the name, the file location and the size of the image. Once we've defined that, every time we invoke the name using the show command, so for example, if we were to have a JPEG file of a family having a picnic, we could simply call it picnic. The file location itself would be picnic.jpg or picnic.png, and the size of the image would be the size of the image that we want to display on the screen. So for example, if we have a 1920p uh, image that we want to display on a 1280 screen, we can scale the image using the define command. Then all we have to do is say show picnic and our picnic photo will come up on the screen. Auto define is a feature which allows us to automatically create an image for every file within the images folder. As you can imagine, the longer your visual novel gets, the more and more images you're going to add to your project. And if you have to manually define every single one, that can become very labor intensive and very monotonous. So auto define is a function that automatically happens when you load your RemPy project that creates an image for every file within the images folder. The only limitation of this really is that it doesn't rescale the image. So the files need to be in the correct resolution as we start. The next command that we need to do is scene. Scene clears everything off the screen, including all user interface elements. If the scene command is followed by an image, i.e. scene picnic, the screen will be cleared and then the picnic image will be shown on the screen. This does also have limitations though, in that it also causes the dialogue window to disappear, which means if you use it every time you bring an image on the screen, the window is going to keep disappearing and reappearing, which can be really jarring for your players and it can ruin the immersion somewhat. Generally speaking, I would only use that if you absolutely need to clear all the UI elements from the screen. Now, just like when we define our characters, defining images needs to happen outside of a label. So we can simply pop it here at the very top of our screen. And the first thing we need to do is we need to say image. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a name. So let's say picnic. Then we're going to add an equal symbol here. And then the next thing we need to do is, let's say for example, our image is not currently the right resolution. So we're going to say I am dot scale. Then we're going to open some brackets. The first thing we're going to do is say our file. So we're just going to say images forward slash picnic dot JPEG. And then we're going to add a comma. Then we're going to say 1920 by 1080, which is the image size that we need for our game, because that's the resolution that our game is created at. 
Using this method, we can simply tell our game to scale any image to the right size. But as you can imagine, if we have hundreds or even thousands of images, this is going to become very, very, very boring and very labor intensive. A lot of copy and pasting is going to be needed here. So it's not exactly ideal. So what we can do is we can simply rely on RemPy to auto create this image and just make sure that when we create this picnic image that we are creating it at the correct resolution in the first place. Trust me on this one, it's an awful lot easier to do it that way around rather than rescaling all of your images. Now to actually use this image, what we need to do is we're gonna remove this bit here that says scene at BG room. I'm actually gonna put in picnic there and we're gonna try and see what happens if we use our defined image. So we're gonna save our code and then we're going to run it. Now, as you can see, our image is scaled on the screen nice and correctly and it appears in the background. And as you can see, the placeholder image for Eileen Happy is here. Now we're back in our code. Let's try removing the image definition. I'm just gonna use a hash tier simply to comment that section out so that code no longer actually means anything. And as you can see, the image is still there. And this is because Autodefine has created the image definition for us. So we don't have to manually do it. And this is a real time saver. All you have to do is make sure that the images you're using are the correct resolution in the first place. Now, as you can see, we've used scene here, but the text box is still there. So what happens if we are to use the scene command in between lines of dialogue? back into our file here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna copy this line of code here, and I'm gonna pop it in between these two lines of code like this. I'm gonna save my file, and I'm going to run the project again. Here we are, and we have our text appearing up on the screen. And if I click on the button to move on, as you can see, the dialogue button disappeared and reappeared. Now, in this case, it didn't really seem to be too bad, purely because what happened was the person speaking changed. So it didn't seem to be a huge problem. But if you have multiple lines of dialogue of the same character, and every line of text or every other line of text, the dialogue window disappears, that can become really jarring. So what we can do instead is we can use the show commands to reshow an image that we want to show. If we want the Eileen picture to disappear, what we can use is another command called hide. So that's what we're going to do. Back into our code, what we're going to do here is we're actually gonna remove our scene picnic line here, and we're going to copy this line instead. And we're gonna paste that where it is, and we're gonna change where it says show, and this time we're going to say hide. Then we're gonna save our code, and we're going to run it again. And this time when we press the button, as you can see, all that happens is the dialog window stays up and the Eileen image disappears. Again, this can be really useful. However, the fact that it just disappeared off the screen can also be slightly jarring. Um, if you have characters and things appearing, sometimes it's nicer to transition them onto the screen. So let's have a look at that. Here's what I want to happen. I want Eileen to slowly come onto the screen, fading and slowly fade off the screen again. So what I'm going to do is at the end of the show Eileen Happy, I'm actually going to say with dissolve. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it to the end of this line as well. And then we're gonna save that and we're going to run it. Now we're about to start our game. So let's see what happens. We hit start. As you can see, Eileen fades onto the screen nice and smoothly, and then when it's time to disappear, she also fades off quite nicely as well. Dissolve is one of the predefined transitions that you can use in RemPy, which allow us to change the way that our images appear and disappear from the screen. These can also be applied to the scene command, which is also very useful. And it just means that we can just make our, our VN a little bit more visually interesting. There are also many, many other transforms which are predefined, and you can create your own using what is known as ATL language. That's something that we're gonna go into in a little bit more depth further down the line, but for now, just know that Dissolve is a really nifty way of transitioning your images onto the screen. Similar to using the transforms for the effects, we can also actually adjust where the image appears on the screen. So for example, if I say show Eileen at left with dissolve, and then I save my file, 
As you can see, now Eileen has appeared on the left-hand side of the screen, which is actually quite useful because it means that you can add these images to wherever in the screen you want. And there are various different transforms predefined that you can choose as well. And you can also create your own, again, something that we will discuss further down the line. So this just means that we have multiple ways that we can adjust the position and the way that our images appear on the screen really easily which can make an awful lot of difference in the way that our visual novel looks. Thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Stay tuned for the next one. And until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.